Hi there, it's Rob. Welcome to another of our MagicQ to screen tutorials. In the last few tutorials, we looked at the basics of using the desk in a theatre stack mode, uh, as like a theatre desk, and we also uh, looked at how to record a, a couple of cues into a cue stack. So we're going to take that a bit further today. Uh, we're going to record some uh, some more cues and go back and look at editing them. But before we do that, we're going to also look at some ways that you can customise the MagicQ to uh, for the particular way you want to work at the time. So let's go straight over to the Magic Key then. I'm obviously using my software. So I've loaded up my last show, um, which was my uh, tutorial show for you now, just to remind you how I did that. In order to load a new show, what I did was I went to Setup, and I hit the Soft button at the top of the screen, obviously on here the software version, but on the Soft button on the desk, hit Load Show. It asked me if I want to uh, erase the current show, which is the show we're using at the moment. That's fine. It's not going to delete the show from the uh, hard drive. It's just going to take it out of the desk. And mine's called uh, MagicQ YouTube Tutorial Show. So that's my show there, and that's loaded up. So now I'm in the setup window, and I'm going to close that window. Now what I'm going to do before we uh, talk about uh, recording some more cues and editing the cues is I'm going to just uh, show you a little bit of how you can set up the MagicQ um, to, to show uh, views that you want um, so that you can use them for different things. So you might use a view for recording, you might use a view for um, recording moving lights, or a, a cue for you know editing generics or changing times and stuff. So the Magic Cue up here, if you remember from the original tutorials, um, up, up here on the right hand side and up on the right of the desk are a load of buttons which basically relate to the windows. And if you remember, the windows uh, can be opened and closed. So at the moment, I've got the Q stack window open. If I want to look at the outputs window, I click on outputs. So there's all our outputs. I've just changed a few um, a, few, a few details there so that it looks slightly different. So originally, um, we were looking at this uh, a, a list of the actual fixtures in a kind of list format, and that was under view heads. And then where it says view raw, it shows you the um, it shows you in different versions of how to look at the data. But when you're in this window, you can see you can uh, view things in a different way. So you can, if you hit view channels and you hit view horizontal, you can see um, it looks kind of like it does on a theater desk. So that's what I just set up to show you. Now that particular setting with the view horizontal um, is, a, is something that I can save so I can see, um, next time I open it, I can see it another time. Now all these windows, I can open them using their, the, the relevant button. So this one's the output window. I can close them. I can open them up again, and again you see that you know they're, they're basically they're back as they were when they were saved. Now you could set the the windows up in a lot of different ways so that you can uh, use them for different purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up some windows, um, and this can work on the screen you can see here on the touch screen, and it can also work on the external screens as well. So if you remember from previous tutorials, if you want to get a screen um, onto another, uh, onto get a window onto another screen, uh, you need to make sure the window's active, which means it's got a solid bar at the top of it, and then you need to hit external. And it basically, the external screen, it will then bump to the first external screen. You hit it again, it'll bump to the next one. So that's how you work on the active window. And if you remember up here, all these window controls relate to uh, some other things as well, including the size. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this output window. I'm going to set myself up a, a, a new look. And I, I want my look of this particular look for this tutorial. I'm going to set it up so that I have my cue stack window, which is already open. And I want to have it set up at the bottom of my touch screen and it's half size. So I've got it selected. I'm going to hit size. Now you see that now you see the cue stack screen is at the top. Um, in half size, but I want it at the bottom in half size. So I'm going to hit size again and it's taken it to the bottom. So that's my first, that's the first window I want open. The next window I want open is my groups window. Now that's already open here because you can see that on the top right. But if it was filling the screen, um, I could uh, I could keep sizing it until it actually uh, was in the place I wanted to. So it can either be uh, full screen or half screen or quarter screen. And so I've got my groups window open there. The last thing I want to do in this particular tutorial is I'm going to open the programmer window. So if I open the programmer, you can see it's full screen, covers everything else up. I'm going to just resize it a couple of times until it eventually slots in to where I want it to. So it'll be the next one here. Okay, so there's my programmer. So I've got these three screens. Now, if I had external screens, I could have other information on the other screens, but this is ones I want to show you at the moment. So I've got my Q stack, I've got my uh, groups, and I've also uh, got my programmer. Now, in order to save that so that I can recall it again, 
I want to save it to, a, uh, basically, if I hold down control on the Magic Cube, there's a hard button of control. There's actually two. There's one either to other side of the touchscreen at the top. And on my PC, um, on my Mac, I can hold down control. It gives me all these view buttons. Now, the view buttons that are here on the UT show are the ones that are already set. And the, these blank ones are ones that we can fill in with our, um, with our, our new looks, uh, our new screen views. So what I want to do is I'm going to record that um, so that I can recall it at another time. So what I'm going to do... A bit like recording a queue, I'm going to hit record, I'm going to type in the name of the screen, so I'm going to call it Rob's Screens, and then I'm going to hold down control so that it shows up the empty slots, and then I'm going to hit the slot. So I see if I hold down control, I've got that screen there. Now I can show you that that works, because uh, if I go to the palette screen, you can see I've got uh, my group and my position and my colour and my beam palettes. If I hold down control and go to my Output screen, you can see I've got a, a, it pulls up my output window. So these are all saved. I've got a couple of others here, the dimmer plan and the plotting screen. They're the ones that are saved in the on the UT show file, which uh, basically I've set up to be a kind of default, useful default screen. So the plotting one is a useful default screen. Now, at the moment, it looks slightly different to how it does in the UT because the uh, in the UT you have the external screens. But basically, uh, I can recall them uh, however I like. Now, I'm going to recall my screens there. Okay, so you can see I've got my screens there. Now, um, you can set up these screens in a number of ways. Each screen has its own sort of set of views and that, and any of these things that you can set up in, in terms of uh, whether you're looking at the times or whether you're looking at the, uh, the, uh, the effects or any of the uh, different uh, options, which are often up here on the soft buttons, you can save those as well. So every time you recall that, all of those options then are recalled. And that's quite a, a powerful way of um, setting up your workspaces so that you can, um, you can work quickly and you can change between screens. So obviously hold down control, change the view, do something, you know, all spot, at full, and on centre, in green, uh, in Gobo 7, and then I can kind of go to another screen and go, okay, so I'm now going to go to my screen, so that shows me uh, what's in the programmer, and it also shows me what's in my queue stack. Okay, so now you've set up a few custom screens. We'll use this one to um, just to look at the uh, the queues and to look at the queue list. So we've already recorded a queue uh, and a second queue, which is basically which was um, I think we've set some house lights to come in or whatever. So what we're going to do is record up another few queues. So my next queue, I'm just going to clear the programmer because you should always clear the programmer when you uh, record your queue. Um, I'm going to make some changes so I'm going to rather than hitting um, a group I'm gonna I'm gonna call up my channels by type so I'm gonna go one and four and seven and then I'm gonna do at 50 now you see in the programmer one and four and seven have come up at 50 and so when I save that away to the group that's what's going to happen um, so the, 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 the queue before is Q2 and I'm gonna save it to group to Q3 now I could, this is my selected playback, playback 10, this is the one where I'm creating my queue stack at the moment. As I've got that selected, the only thing I actually need to do to record the next queue is I only actually need to hit record and then enter. Because it basically tacks another queue with the, with the next uh, queue ID, which is queue 3, onto the end of the queue stack. So you can do that really quickly. So you can just do record, enter, and that's called the next queue. Now, I didn't write a name for that. I could have hit record and typed a title in for it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, in the queue text, I'm going to type in Q3. So I'm not feeling terribly adventurous on queue names. So that's my Q3. So what we can see, if we step through the queue list, if I just fire, uh, if I open up the output window, and I've got my, my master up for the, the, the fader master up, I'm going to hit go. You see my first queue going then, my second one is a snap to black, and my third one is a fade up of number one, number four, and number seven. So that's my three queues. I'm going to go back to my, uh, my, my custom screen now. So I'm going to add another couple of queues, and the next queue I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, everything at 70%. Uh, at so I'm going to hit all dimmer, and then I'm going to hit at 70 you can see down there in the program, everything's at 70. Now what I'm going to do this time is, I'm rather than recording it at Q3, uh, I'm actually going to record it at Q8. So you can actually record Q numbers and point numbers and everything else in the same way, and as long as you type in uh, a value. So you can hit record, 
you can go 8 and enter and you can see that you see if I record uh, recorded it as Q8 I could have recorded it as 8.5 or 3.5 or even 2.5 it would have fitted in um, to the queue list okay so we've set um, we've set up our queues and these particular queues have default fade times the default fade time is set to three seconds uh, as it sometimes is on on lighting on, on theater lighting desks so what you can do is you can click on the field and you can hit a number hit five and enter and it will change the uh, it will change the, the the general time for the fade that's the fade in time there's more uh, fade options if you actually look within the queue itself so if you select a queue and highlight the queue or even go to the queue so you can go uh, select three and go to or you can type three and hit go to queue that brings up the queue and um, so what we can do inside that now you can see up here on the uh, on the soft buttons bar you can hit view queue now in the simple view and it says view levels um, you get to see what's in the queue so that's my one four and seven in the queue if I look at view times it will give me some information on the in time and out time. So the dimmer, dimmer times that you're looking at are int in and int out, which is intensity. Um, so you can uh, look at those, and also there's other ones for moving lights and that position. The times are general times for the default uh, times for uh, position and, and color and beam and stuff like that. If we look at advanced view, what we end up seeing is the individual attributes of the individual dimmers themselves. So if these were moving lights, there'd be a load more attributes. But these are only dimmers, so they've only got one attribute, uh, the intensity. And so you can see uh, the fixture one, dimmer one, is at five seconds, and they're all at five seconds. Now, there's kind of cunning ways of making uh, this happen uh, automatically. But what I'm just going to show you now is if you actually wanted to go into the queue and change the, t the timing on one particular fixture, you can actually pull them up in this list here and then you can just change the number again. So two of the fixtures are going in um, over five seconds and the other one's going in over three seconds. So I just flick back to the, my original view. And so you can see here now in the fade time, there's a, there's a little arrow next to the fade time, which basically means that although the general fade time is over five seconds, there's something else in there as well. So not everything is fading at five seconds. There's other things happening as well. If it was moving lights, then it might be that the color or the position was fading over a different fade time. The best practice, and especially when you're uh, using moving lights, the best practice for uh, editing a queue is to, when you're using a programmer desk, is to uh, enter the data from the queue into the programmer, make the changes, and then dump it back out of the programmer again. And so what you need to do is what moving light desks sometimes call load, or uh, in this case, some another one uh, is include. And what it does is it includes the information from that queue into the programmer, which currently is empty at the moment, you make your change and then you can update it back into the queue. So it's quite simple to do. All you do is you select the queue you want. So you could say, um, or even you could do it by number. So if it was Q2, you could go include two, enter. Or you could select the window item with the mouse or with your uh, on the touch screen or whatever you like. Um, so that's the contents of the queue, everything at zero. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my change. So I'm going to go three and four at 70 so I've made my change in the programmer you can see it's 70 there and what I'm going to do now I've got two options here with lights on them on the on the buttons on the desk I've got clear which obviously has the red light on it because there's something in the programmer and I've also got update so what I'm going to do is hit update and that's basically where it's gone green there that basically is because it's now outputting um, from the real queue and it's updated that queue that's uh, that we've changed now if I hit clear and I release the playback, what we'll see now is if we look at Q2, which is the one we changed, isn't it? You'll see that in that Q, 3 and 4 are at 70. So hopefully that's been useful. Um, we'll continue with this um, in future tutorials, including the use of moving lights, but that will get you going in terms of recording and editing cues. See you again soon.